Assalamu alaikum and thank you all for coming. I want to first thank all the volunteers. Uh, I know they've been thanked already, but we can't thank them enough uh, for organizing this beautiful banquet. Uh, how was the food, everyone? Good? Yeah. I want to thank our, uh, again, our office manager, Osama Sabai. Where are you at, my man? I also want to thank the, uh, and recognize uh, our board of trustees, sisters Halim Asmati and Aram Sayed, brothers Ajmal Khan, Abdul Aziz, Arshad Alvi, vice chair, brother Rashid Thomas, treasurer Saeed Ahmed, secretary, brother Osama Mukaddam, and parliamentarian, Dr. Ann Kemtrip. Thank you for all your hard work. I also want to recognize the steady leadership of Salam's directors, uh, beginning with our religious and services, uh, excuse me, religious and social director, Imam Amr Dabur, our executive director, Dr. Matwali Amr, and our learning, and, uh, our learning director, Brother Asif Huck, our amazing MC tonight. I'd like to ask all the board members and directors to please stand up and be recognized and give them a round of applause. So you just saw a visual of what Salam does, so I'm not going to restate all of it, but I do wish to highlight a few areas. Our Girl Scouts had resolved to build a memorial playground in honor of Sarah and Sophia Ruin, two lovely children, uh, and Salam Girl Scouts who were tragically taken from us last year. A few months ago, the playground became a reality, uh, you would have passed it right as you entered uh, this community center building. The playground would not have been possible without our Salam Girl Scouts, the hard work of their troop leader uh, and board member, Sister Aram Sayed, and countless of other donors and volunteers. Uh, over the past year, we invested in significant improvements uh, one of which will lower our operating costs. The solar system installation was completed a few months ago and was made possible by the generosity of our community and hard work and tenacity of one of our board members, Brother Ajmal Khan, where are you at? There you are. Thank you very much. And in case you haven't noticed, I want you to look down on the floors. These new tiles, as well as a hardwood and carpet, installed in the hallways and classrooms upstairs and, and here as well, were made possible by some key individuals. Uh, Dr. Shaista Rauf, who couldn't be with us tonight, and Dr. Firdos Shea, uh, led this community center beautification project and hosted a fundraiser at Dr. Shaista's home to raise the $45,000 needed to complete the work. A big thanks also to Brother Ajmal Khan and Dr. Ann Kemtrip for helping with design ideas choosing materials and selecting contracts. Thank you very much. Like I said, but I'm Malik, right? Did I not say that? I'm Malik, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Where are you at, Brother Amjad? Sorry, my brother. <laughs> uh, you know, I can always count on you, Dr. Mantuoli, to keep me straight, keep me honest. <laughs> uh, Salam's interfaith and outreach work has never been more ro robust. For many of you who attended, or who attend uh, Jama'a services, you'll notice we now routinely conduct tours and host our non-Muslim guests within the masala uh, during the khutbah. Building allies and trusted relationships in the interfaith community is crucial uh, to Salam's vision for an inclusive and pluralistic society. Our learning director, Brother Asif Haq, our amazing MC, uh, has been instrumental in leading the charge for promoting interfaith dialogue and outreach with the help of also Dr. Ann Kemtrup, who leads the Friday tours for our sisters, our non-Muslim sisters. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we also welcomed our uh, Imam Amr, our superstar, rock star Imam, is that how we described him in the video? Uh, who joined us just in time for Ramadan. 
Uh, and mashallah, he has really immersed himself in our community and uh, getting to know everyone here. Thank you for all you have done in such a short period of time. Uh, so I, I now want to turn my attention to our theme for this evening, Muslims in the media. And I would like to share a quick story if you'll indulge me. Uh, I grew up in Beirut, Lebanon in the late 1970s, uh, right when the Civil War and the Israeli air raids were kicking into high gear. As a seven-year-old, I remember uh, scrambling indoors uh, after seeing a gunfight break out in the streets below our apartment balcony. And uh, you know, we had this thing called a two-wall rule. You had to put yourself between two walls and the firefight outside because machine gun fire can penetrate one wall. Uh, I also have a clear memory of my father, uh, Ali Hamo, standing on the balcony watching Israeli bombing raids over Beirut uh, while my mom would yell at him to come inside the house. Uh, my dad was adventurous like that. Uh, anyway, we finally moved to Sri Lanka, which is where my father's from, uh, in 1980. Shortly after that, the Israeli ground invasion came. In 1983, the IDF, along with the Phalangist allies, went into the Palestinian res refugee camps of Sabran Shatila, uh, right in the heart of Beirut, and massacred over 3,000 unarmed civilians. I think many of you probably remember that. So why am I sharing the story with you now? The Newsweek foreign correspondent in Beirut, who reported the story, did a complete whitewash of what really happened. My uncle, who read the article, was at the time a medical student at the American University in Beirut. And he ran into this reporter at a local coffee shop. So my uncle Nizam, was his name, confronted him about the blatantly false article. After listening to his angry tirade, this reporter pulls a piece of paper out of his briefcase and showed it to my uncle. He said, this was the original article I submitted to be published, and the editor wouldn't run it, and watered it down instead and, and ran this this puff piece. You see, in the 1980s, 90s, and even 2000s, American Muslims were largely absent from our media landscape. That's starting to change in a real way. We need more voices like Linda Sarsour, who we hosted here last year, Hassan Minhaj, Ayman Mohideen, and of course, Wajhad Ali. We need more editorial influence in major media outlets. And sometimes those voices will not align perfectly with my position on every single issue. But the question is, are more Muslims advancing the Muslim counter-narrative on most issues that are important to us, when in the past such a thing didn't even exist? And do we want more of that? As Muslims living in America, I believe we have a role to make this country and this world a better place for everyone. I want to change it for the better, to form a more perfect union that's inclusive of you and me. Last year, I talked about how America has always been a melting pot, and to truly melt, we must diffuse as much as we absorb. Absorbing is the easier part. Diffusion is hard, especially when you're a minority which is why being media savvy and increasing our media engagement is so important. It's how we accelerate diffusion and influence. And we should be careful also to filter what we absorb. There are some things about American culture that as Muslims we shouldn't emulate. That's why salam is so crucial in helping us strike the right balance particularly for our young children and adults and young adults for whom growing up in America can present unique challenges and difficult life choices while trying to fit in and find acceptance. It takes institutions like Salam to provide a place for all of us to not only worship, that's a nice ringtone. <laughs> it takes institutions like Salam to provide a place for all of us to not only worship and learn, but to engage and influence and change our world for the better. That's why I contribute to Salam. And I hope you feel the same way. You know, we've accomplished so much together. So my question to you is, should we keep it going? 
Is Salam worth it? You can answer that. Should, should, we, should we safeguard this legacy for our children and grandchildren? Yes? Will you keep the Salam dream alive and well? All right, so uh, last quick thing, uh, again, if you'll indulge me. I'm in my fifth year serving you as chairman, and I'll also complete my sixth year uh, as board member uh, when my term ends in a few months. Uh, I want to thank you for placing your confidence and trust in me when you elected me to the board. And I'm also grateful to all of my fellow uh, board members and really my dear friends for uh, choosing me to be uh, chair uh, of the board for these past few years. I sincerely hope I have made a positive impact to Salam, that I have not let you down, and that you will forgive any mistakes I may have made. It has been the honor of my life to have served, and I thank you and most of all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for the opportunity. So with that, I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you so much, and Salam alaikum.